So we are almost about to begin. We're starting off just in the next few minutes. So wherever you are, just set up yourself. We're just about to kick off and to start today's program, trusting God for grace to manifest. Amen and amen and amen. Praise God in the highest. We thank God for the opportunity that God has been able to accord us. I'm glad that I can have this privilege just to be able to come and administer God's word to you again. And I hope that wherever you are, you are already blessed of God. Now today we're just going straight into the scriptures so that we can be able to dig into what God intends for us to be able to cover. And I want to encourage you, wherever you're watching from, just to find the liberty to go ahead and to share. You can go ahead and just post the link to our WhatsApp group, or even just go ahead and also uh, share just on your WhatsApp or on your Facebook uh, account, or even go ahead and start a watch party so that others can be blessed, or tag a friend or two and let somebody be blessed of God. I want us to delve into God's word. Yesterday we began a journey from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 4 and verse number 13. And we are looking at a topic entitled the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith. Now this is something that had actually come into my heart because I felt very strong that the season we are living in, there is all manner of evil and attack that is actually ravaging against many people, more so the believers. And these things are actually beginning to affect the atmosphere, causing many people to have a lot of fear doubts, hopelessness, a sense even of a feeling, a sense of despair in the hearts of very many people. So of, uh, of, of necessity, I believe that God has intended for us to be able to get this word as we are dealing with the aspect of the spirit of faith so that many believers can be able to get something that can be able to build them and enable them to grow as they deal or they face uh, the negative things that are happening in the world right now. So I want you to join me as we are about to start off. Remember, we are going to be looking at 2 Corinthians chapter number 4 and verse number 13, and then we are going to be building everything from there, and we will be praying and trusting God to manifest himself. Let's just begin with a word of prayer and believe God that God will give us an awesome time. Father, we dedicate this moment into your hands and pray that, Lord, you will avail and reveal yourself more than ever before. You are the God who he Hears the cry of your people and your intention is to extend your hand of grace towards them. So Lord, I commit this meeting or this session into your hands and I pray that this program Therapeutic today will be able to spread and even be able to make an impact in the lives of those that are actually tuning in that God, their lives will never remain the same again. So Lord, uh, let your word find full expression. Let it be glorified as your people will get to hear it. And thank you because Lord, your word will be rema to the hearts of those that are actually questioning and asking you to speak to them today in Jesus name and I believe we had an amen and amen right there second Corinthians chapter number four in verse number 13 we will just build on everyone else will find us as we continue the Bible says we have in the same spirit of faith according as it is written take note of that as it is written I believed and therefore have I spoken we also believe and therefore speak 
So there are things that we actually looked at when we began to deal with this specific topic and this has to do with the spirit of faith when we began by checking out five dimensions of faith which I mentioned yesterday when I spoke about the common faith, I spoke about the measure of faith, I spoke about the gift of faith, I also was able to speak about the law of faith. And then lastly the spirit of faith, five dimensions of faith. Let me repeat that again, the measure of faith, the common faith, the law of faith, the gift of faith and lastly which we are dealing with which we know as the spirit of faith now these are five dimensions of faith that are very necessary uh, in the life of a Christian and also in the human life so that people can be able to have experiences in God remember the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and verse number 6 that without faith it is impossible to please God so the currency that operates in the spiritual world that commands or, or calls God's attention is faith and this same currency is what advances matters in the world of of the spirit so those are five currencies of faith that are very critical to be able to help a believer or even a human being to be able to find advancement I was able to explain each one of those five of them and then now we landed on the last one which is a spirit of faith now yesterday I was able to explain to us that the spirit of faith in number one basically speaks of when one has fullness of faith when one is full of faith the book of Acts chapter number 6 explains to us concerning a man called Stephan or Stephen, depending with how you want to pronounce it, but Stephan is the right word, and how he was full of the Holy Ghost and how he was full of faith. So you notice that even whenever God, uh, whenever the aspect of the, uh, the, what we consider as the spirit of faith is active in a person, what we are actually speaking about is that somebody is actually full, he has a fullness of faith active on the inside of them. Number two, we also were able to define the aspect of the spirit of faith being not just fullness of faith but being somebody who is activated in the spirit somebody who is actually spiritually activated so when your spirit is activated then your faith begins to develop and that's one reason why whenever we pray a lot or when we pray a lot in the spirit you will tend to realize that something begins to happen to you in your view of life or in your view of situations around you why simply because your faith has been able to be built up because your spirit man is activated and empowered by the Holy Spirit so that's the two things we were able to look at so later on we spoke about three ways that somebody can operate on uh, operate in the spirit of faith if you want to operate in the spirit of faith there are three ways number one that this spirit is operational when somebody is under uh, the law of impartation serves under the law of impartation that means you are an in, in are in an environment where that same spirit is transmitted or imparted into your life we looked at Ezekiel chapter number two and verse number one and verse number two in verse number one of Ezekiel chapter number two the Bible speaks about how God commanded Ezekiel to stand up and in standing up the Bible says and the Lord began to speak to him and as he spoke to him his spirit entered him so the spirit of faith basically operates under the law of impartation so you have to be in an environment where there is impartation Romans chapter 10 and verse number 17 Romans 10 17 says faith comes by hearing and by hearing God's word so that spirit of faith enters you or it is stirred up on the inside of you when you are under an environment of impartation always consider where you are and what you hear so that the spirit of faith can automatically become active in you if you are in a wrong environment you will end up attracting the wrong impartation but if you're in a right environment the impartation automatically becomes correct number two we say that this type of uh, uh, what we consider operating under the law uh, what we consider under the spirit uh, of uh, uh, of faith is when somebody is also uh, spiritually active or when they pray in the spirit when they pray oftenly in the spirit we looked at Jude verse number 20 Jude verse number 20 the Bible says beloved building yourself up in the most holy faith praying always in the spirit building yourself up in the most holy faith praying always in the spirit so the second way that somebody can be able to at least tap into the spirit of faith is by praying oftenly in the spirit praying in tongues allowing yourself to always build up yourself by speaking in tongues often remember Romans 8 and verse number 26 the Spirit of God knows our limitations or our infirmities and he prays for us with growings that words cannot be able to express when we do not know what we ought to pray for so one of the key reasons why we actually pray often in tongues first Corinthians chapter number 14 the Bible says whoever prayeth in tongues edifies himself the word edify means to construct to constitute to build up yourself to strengthen or to energize yourself so whenever we actually 
pray a lot in tongues or we pray a lot or often in the spirit, what exactly happens to us is that we become energized. We are actually experiencing the spirit of faith being active on the inside of us. And number three, the spirit of faith also works effectively on the inside of us when we have discipline, spiritual disciplines, disciplines like prayer, disciplines like the word, disciplines like righteousness, all these practices that God has called us to practice. We must always notice that whenever we constantly practice spiritual disciplines, the spirit of faith then grows on the inside of us. Now, let me make this statement even as I continue that what is on the inside determines how you will handle the things on the outside. What is on your inside determines how you will handle the issues on your outside. So that's why the Bible says it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaketh. And Jesus even adding it, that's in Luke chapter 6 and verse 45, he says that it is out of the good treasure in the heart of a man that good things will emerge. And out of the evil treasure in the heart of a man that evil or wicked things will emerge. So you cannot produce what is uh, good if or what is on the inside is wicked and you cannot produce what is wicked if what is on the inside is also good so anytime we want to operate under the spirit of faith the third way is by ensuring that we develop spiritual disciplines. Have a discipline to pray. Have a discipline of the word. Have a discipline to stay around an environment that empowers you. Have a discipline of righteousness. Have a discipline of the things you listen to, the things you watch, the places you go to, the relations you have. Every time you are under the right environment and under and you practice the right disciplines, it's natural that you will get to notice ultimately that you will end up growing in the spirit of faith. The book of Isaiah chapter number 53, the Bible says, And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Isaiah 53, And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? And unto whom, I mean, and who shall believe the report of the Lord? Who shall believe the report of the Lord? There's a question that Isaiah is asking. Then all of a sudden you begin to read from verse number 2, going downwards when he gives a description of what will happen to the Lord Jesus and the reason why uh, Jesus will actually have to be crucified. I'm just creating a paraphrase there. So when we are talking about the spirit of faith it's necessary in our current times that people or believers tap into the spirit remember what you're full of is what determines how you will handle what is on your outside if you're full of fear you can't handle things correctly but if you're full of faith you will notice that what you are full of is what determines how you will handle things how you will handle things on the outside so we are looking at the spirit of faith and of necessity we are saying that it is essential in our current times that believers should begin to pray that they should possess the spirit of faith and allow it to be active on the inside of them now back to the scripture of second corinthians chapter number four you will notice that there are three things that are actually signs to show that somebody is full of the spirit of faith okay the first one is believing the second one is in speaking and the third one is in the aspect of your results or your commanded answers your commanded answers or your results the three signs to show that somebody possesses a spirit of faith number one is in your believing number two in your speaking and number three in the aspect of what we consider as your commanded results so somebody who has actually the spirit of faith has a sense of believing they believe now if you look at mark chapter 16 and verse 17 the bible says that this sign shall follow them that believe so believing is very essential when you would actually want to operate in the spirit of faith in luke chapter number one when the angel of the lord appeared to two people the first one was zachariah and the second one was mary we notice that the second person possessed a spirit of faith and we will get to understand why zachariah though a priest who served god and was in the process of offering up incense according to luke chapter number one the scripture records that while he had gone to offer up incense according to scripture the bible explains to us in the process of him doing so an angel appeared to him and it was during his time and the angel told him concerning how his wife will conceive and how the child will become great Zechariah doubted and the angel of God ended up zipping up his mouth though the prophetic word that he uttered came to pass but we see later on a woman called Mary and the young girl who is approached by the angel is also given a prophecy concerning how she will conceive and bear a child now remember Zechariah asked a question that was very genuine because both of them were of age but even Mary asked a question but in this time when Mary is asking the question the angel does does not zip up her mouth as he had done zipped up the mouth of this man called Zachariah and there's a reason why the reason why is because Zachariah had enough testimonies in his background Zachariah had people like Sarah the mother
mother of Isaac. He had people like Rebecca, the mother of Jacob and Esau. He had people like Rachel, the mother of Joseph and the mother of Benjamin. He had people like Hannah, who was the mother of Samuel, uh, the mother of Samson. He had other, I mean, you know, we are talking about different testimonies that he had in the Old Testament, even prophecies that were actually given. So when the angel zipped up his mouth, it's because Zachariah had sufficient testimonies to give him the conviction of believing. But simply because he doubted, the angel therefore divinely decided to zip up his mouth. And that's, that's why we observe this. But to Mary, Mary had no testimony. Yes, there was a scripture that actually is in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 that brings out a question uh, concerning how a virgin shall end up conceiving. But it had never been so. So Mary had to ask the question, how shall it be since I do not know a man? And asking that question was out of a pure pedestal without any background or any history in her background. So the Bible records the angel ended up giving an answer and said the spirit of God will come upon you and the power of God will overshadow you. Now listen to the words of Mary. Mary said, be it unto me according to your words. Now immediately when Mary said so, she exercised the attribute of believing. And in Luke chapter 1 and verse 45, uh, that is when we observe Elizabeth meeting Mary and there are words that Elizabeth speaks to Mary. Elizabeth mentions this. Elizabeth says, blessed is she that believes for there shall be a performance. There shall be a performance. So believing releases performance. So the only way that we, the first sign, rather to show that somebody has a spirit of faith in them, is that they are quick to believe. They believe. They believe. They believe. Like Mary, even though she had no backdrop, was quick enough to believe what the angel of God, Gabriel, was sent to speak to her. Now, many guys usually struggle whenever God speaks to them. And they struggle because they have no foundation of uh, uh, the spirit of faith on the inside of them. Anytime you struggle with believing, then it shows that the spirit of faith is actually not in your heart. If not so, the measure of the spirit of faith within you is actually quite limited. You know, when Jesus gives the story of the sower and how the power of the sower he explains of how one of the places that this seed landed was on rocky places and how it began to grow but later because of the scorching sun this particular uh, uh, whatever plant that was growing ended up dying and then Jesus now explains to the disciples what exactly it meant now these are the words of Jesus Jesus says that these are those that receive the word with great joy but because they did not have any root of understanding when persecution arose because of the word they ended ended up getting offended. Now, notice the words that he said. He said, these are those that receive the word with joy and gladness, but because they did not have any root, they did not have any root of understanding. And that's what many believers usually have. They have no root on the inside of them. So they have no measure. The measure of the spirit of faith on them is very limited. So when God begins to speak, the ability to believe is constantly affected because what is in their head and what is in their heart is very limited. It cannot be able to receive what heaven is speaking. Now please remember, God will never speak what makes sense to you. God will only speak what is supposed to be believed. And anytime God is speaking, God only expects us to believe. If even when we do not understand how it shall be. That's what exactly happened to Mary. Mary simply believed. Now to believe simply means to put your trust in. To believe also means to have your confidence in. But to believe much more means to be converted in your thinking. To be converted in your thinking. That means if a person believes, it means that they have adjusted, they have shifted from looking at things on the sensual realm and they have begun to perceive it in faith. So they are no longer looking at things in the realm of, uh, of, of senses, a human realm. They are now perceiving them and receiving them in the realm of faith. They believe it simply because God has been able to speak it. Remember concerning the man who was known as Abraham in Genesis chapter number 15 that it was accounted to him as a righteousness because he believed simply because he believed God accounted his faith to him as a righteousness just because of the attribute of believing let me encourage you that if you really want to know the spirit of faith is active on the inside of you the aspect of believing is extremely simple you don't struggle to believe God speaks it you believe it and you receive it and by doing so things begin to happen on the inside of you now remember John chapter number one and verses number 12 john 1 and verse 12 the bible says and to whosoever will believe to those that believed and those that received they were given the power to be called the sons of god so there's a dimension of power that is released when believing and receiving is available remember believing goes with receiving so the moment a person believes they receive and there's a dimension of power activeness of god's ability that is made available to a believer so sign number one to show that the spirit of faith is active within you you don't struggle with believing so that means if you're struggling with believing it means the spirit of faith in you is affected so what do you do look for 
impartation. What do you do? Begin to pray often in the spirit. What do you do? Begin to go back to the disciplines of the spirit on the inside of you. <coughs> Excuse me. Number two sign to show that the spirit of faith is active within you is your speaking. Your speaking can confirm that the spirit of faith is on the inside of you. Now remember Joel chapter number three and verses number 10. In Joel three and verse number 10, the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. A state of weakness, but a language that projects energy and shows that somebody doesn't believe in what they are actually facing. So the moment a person has a spirit of faith, they constantly speak contrary to their condition. They don't speak equal to what they are facing. They speak equal to what they are believing. If God wants them to achieve something, that's what they are speaking. If they are believing God to move into a place of abundance, they speak abundance. If they are believing God to enter into a state of wholeness, they speak wholeness. If they are believing God to enter into a state of open doors, they speak open doors. So they never speak equal to their prevailing circumstance or their prevailing situation whatever happens to them is not what governs their speaking so people with the spirit of faith speak what they believe they speak what they are expecting they speak what they are anticipating to be able to enjoy and i want to encourage each one of you that is actually watching right now question yourself what are you speaking in romans chapter number four and verses number 17 romans 4 and verse 17 the bible says concerning god who quickeneth the dead who quickeneth the dead and scholeth those things which be not as though they were god quickens the dead things and god calls the things which are not as though they were even the believer is called into the same the language of the spirit of faith is that the spirit of faith if you want to confirm sign number two that you have it is that you will speak things that are not as though they were you speak your expectations you speak the things you anticipated you speak the things that you are believing for you speak the things that you are actually trusting god to be able to manifest please remember these same words that God has given you, this same mouth God has given you and the words that he has given you are powerful enough to construct the things that you desire. In the very beginning, in Genesis chapter number one, we see the power of constitution. When God in the very beginning, when the world was formless and void, began to speak. The Bible says in Genesis one and verse number one, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. But in verse number two, we see a crisis. The Bible says the earth was formless and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God hovered on top of the waters. Now, the reason the Holy Ghost was hoovering, that word hoover means to brood, to brood over. This, the same way, <coughs> excuse me, a hen would brood over eggs. And in verse number three, we now realize what God does. The Bible says, and God said, let there be light. Now, God spoke because God knew the Holy Ghost was actively waiting to act on the words that are spoken. So that means every day in our life, when the spirit of faith is active on the inside of us, the Holy Ghost is waiting for us to speak in order for him to act. They are things that even angels cannot be able to do or the Holy Ghost cannot be able to do unless we begin to speak. So sign number two to show that the spirit of faith is active on the inside of you is an attribute of speaking. The Bible says, we therefore, possessing the same spirit of faith, believed. So sign number one is believing. And therefore, we have spoken. What did we speak? Now go back. Go back to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. What did we speak in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 in verse number 13? The Bible says, having the same spirit of faith according at his, as it is written. So what are we speaking? We are speaking the word of God. That is our expectation. We are speaking the promise of God. The scripture says here again, according as it is written. So if it is written, concerning god's will for us is healing if it is written concerning the will of god concerning our lives is uh prosperity favor blessing enlargement wholeness peace of mind divine healing and stuff like that that is what we are speaking what the word of god has been able to give to us is what we are constantly professing so that is a fullness of faith that we have on the inside of us Sign number three, and I close with this for today. The third sign to show that you actually possess a spirit of faith on the inside of you is commanded results. Commanded results. So how do we know this? Mark chapter number 11 and verse 22 and verses number 23. Go with me there. Now in verse number 22, Jesus speaks. He says, therefore, have the faith of God or have faith in God, or have the God kind of faith. King James, the Bible says, have faith in God. Mark 11 and verse 22, verse 23. He says, and therefore, if you believe, and you do not doubt in your heart, 
that therefore you will say these words unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the water, and you do not doubt in your heart. There, th then shall this mountain hearken to your words. Now, I'm paraphrasing. Jesus was basically trying to tell the disciples that as long as you have no doubt in your heart, and you speak believing that the words you're saying, you have faith that they will actually work. You will notice that as you will command the mountain, the mountain will adhere to the words you are speaking, because from the inside, there is no element of doubt so the results are clear what are the, the results the results are the mountain will be shifted the mountain will be moved now please remember that there is something that God is expecting you to operate with and what God is expecting you to operate with is to expect you to operate with the faith that is on the inside of you so the third sign to show that the spirit of faith is active on the inside of you is that it produces commanded results there will be results things begin to happen and you are expecting them to happen there is no other option so it says you will speak to this mountain and command it to be removed and cast into the water please remember there are results that follow those that have the spirit of faith we don't just speak results follow us the bible says this sign shall follow them that believe results commanded results will begin to follow you they will follow the things you're speaking follow the things you are believing and many of you that are actually watching me part of the reason why you've never had commanded results is because of doubt that has corrupted the faith that is on the inside of you begin to cancel that doubt you know in the book of hebrews chapter number 12 as i close today in verse number one the bible says therefore having this great cloud of witnesses look at that scripture he says let us therefore run this race with patience laying aside every weight and listen to this and the sin the sin not sins in plural but sin in singular the sin that so easily besets us now, if you check out that word sin there, you connect it to Hebrews chapter number 10 and Hebrews chapter 11. The sin there is a sin of unbelief. Now, unbelief is what corrupts the faith that a believer can have. That no matter how big your faith is, if you have small doubt on the inside of you, it corrupts the measure of faith that you have on the inside of you. Uh, you know, it's like a small nail that pierces a balloon that seems to be quite inflated. The balloon is extremely inflated, but just something small, pricking this balloon and causing it to ooze out everything it actually has. Listen, God expects you to have faith without any element of doubt. And as long as you have the spirit of faith in fullness on the inside of you, you will notice it will automatically begin to have commanded results. So what am I saying? Three signs to show that you have the spirit of faith active in the inside of you. Number one, as I've stated here, is believing. Number two is speaking. And number three is commanded results. Today I want to finish there and I want to encourage all of you that are actually watching me to begin to prepare yourself for commanded results. The will of God for every person is that we should be able to have results as believers. The joy of our salvation is not just a fact that we believe in God, but the fact that we have tangible answers. Look at the book of First John chapter number 1 and verses number 1. The Bible says, and therefore we speak of these things that were there in from the beginning. Things that we have heard with our ear, things that we have seen with our eyes, things that we have looked upon and the things that our hands have handled of the word of faith so these things were there in the beginning things that we have heard so we have been hearing things that we have seen with our eyes things that we have looked upon and things that we have handled so everything you had, everything you have seen, and everything that you are looking upon, God's expectation is that you should handle it. This word must become flesh in your hands. It must be tangible. The results must be there. In the book of Job, chapter number 42, when Job is speaking after God begins to answer his prayer, Job makes a statement. He says, I used to hear of you, but now my eye has seen you. What makes God God and what proves Christianity to be one of the greatest work, not just religion, because to us we don't consider Christianity a religion we consider it a relationship but one of the greatest moves on the face of the earth are the things that we see God begin to do in our lives people see tangible answers and results they are able to testify that this is God at work that's what made Elijah become very bold and a man that walked with tremendous faith that at the point when Israel northern Israel was still struggling with the worship of Baal the Bible records that Elijah stood up 
and challenge the people. He said, for how long shall we be divided around two opinions? Today, there has to be an establishment and a knowing of who really God is. And the only way we can prove it, listen to the words of Elijah, this is in the book of 1 Kings chapter number 18, is that the God that answers by fire, he shall be known as God. Elijah calls for a competition, sends out Obadiah, one of the servants over King Ahab. And this man goes and tell Ahab, tells Ahab of what Elijah has been able to say. So what happens? We have a group of people, 300 prophets of Baal, 400 priests of Baal, and all of them come to compete with one man who is a prophet in Israel. The Bible records that they ended up raising up an altar and they laid an offering there or a sacrifice and they called upon their God. 300 prophets, 400 priests, and nothing happened. Elijah mocks them and he tells them, why don't you go ahead and cry? Call to him aloud. The Bible says they even cut themselves. They dance from morning till evening and no answer appeared but when Elijah came into the scenario after they had done their gimmicks the Bible says he was able to repair the altar and he was able to lay a sacrifice and put around 12 stones signifying the 12 tribes of Israel poured water on this particular altar having the sacrifice on top of it saturated it and soaked it in water so that no one will claim that he had done magic or he was using strange methodologies that people were not able to see and after he soaked it with water and he knelt down and called on the God of Israel in one instant of prayer God descended as a fire and licked up the sacrifice and the entire entire place burnt up including the stones that were actually right there the bible says when the all of the whole of israel witnessed what god had been able to do and how god answered by fire every one of them turned to the god of israel and that is when elijah knew that that was the day that god was glorified and demanded that they needed to slaughter and kill all the kings all the priests of baal and the prophets of baal right there israel in one day witnessed a move of god and their hearts stand because they saw the god who answers by fire let me make it clear to each one of you God does answer prayer no matter what you may have been able to go through let the spirit of faith not wear down in your soul remember we need it in our current times when the spirit of faith is active in the believer there are many things you begin to command the results you begin to command and these are the three signs like I've stated three signs to show that the spirit of faith is active within you believing you believe when God speaks you don't struggle when God instructs you don't struggle you quickly believe number two you speak the things that God is speaking that is what happened to Ezekiel in Ezekiel 37 that when God asked Ezekiel can these dry bones live again after putting him in a valley full of dry bones the answer was simple he turned back to God and he told God you are the only one that knows and the Bible records very clearly when he told God that God spoke back to him and God told him therefore command and he spoke as he was commanded and the bones began to respond and number three how do we know that we have the spirit of faith on the inside of us active we begin to have commanded results let me submit this to each one of you no matter what you may have been through let the spirit of faith be active on the inside of you for those of you that may have just come in later I was able to bring in uh, this teaching from yesterday to explain that there are five dimensions of faith and I'm majoring on the spirit of faith. I say there is common faith. I say there is uh, the gift of faith. I say there is the measure of faith. I say there is the law of faith, but there is also what we call the spirit of faith. And I've explained to us even throughout this teaching that when people operate in the spirit of faith, there are only three ways you operate in the spirit of faith. Number one, you operate in the spirit of faith by leaving, staying around the law of impartation staying around an environment that functions with the law of impartation where faith is imparted in you whether summons you hear teachings you hear or you stay around great men that have great faith you cannot stay around faith being active and the same being transmitted to you paul told timothy the faith i saw in your grandmother that i saw in your mother i have also seen it active in you so there was impartation taking course so we must learn that the spirit of faith operates around the the law of impartation impartation is transmission things being given to you faith being active you cannot stay around faith an environment of faith constantly and doubt abide in you it will die instantly so i said number one the law of impartation staying around an environment where impartation the uh, uh, what we call the impartation of faith is active number two i said praying oftenly in the spirit jude verse number 20 the bible says building up yourself in the most holy faith praying always in the spirit 
So that's the second way. And number three, operating under the disciplines of the spirit. Always being disciplined. The discipline of prayer. The discipline of fasting. The discipline of studying the word. The discipline of righteousness. The discipline of staying around the fellowship of the beloved of the believers. These things constantly are able to help you. And then today we have climax right now for this teaching, and we have learned about the three signs of the spirit of faith. Number one, believing. Number two, speaking. And number three, we have made a conclusion on it by commanded results. These are the three signs. And my prayer is that God will be able to manifest them in your life. You will be able to see them active on the inside of you and there will be no strain whatsoever. I trust that you are blessed. I'm glad that you've been able to join me. Uh, a prophet Steve, it's good to have you today. God bless you so much. And all of you that have been able to join, definitely uh, my daughter uh, Becky, good to see you. Uh, Wairimu and also Zili, God bless you. And every other person, I want to ask the Lord to reach out to you. Let me pray for you as we come to the close. Lord, I thank you for each one that has actually joined us today. I'm asking that this spirit of faith will become active in the life of every believer that has been able to join me. I thank you because doubt will have no room in the hearts of your people. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. I announce the strength of faith to grow on the inside of your people. And I thank you that you will raise them to dimensions of faith like never before. And because we have learned about these signs of the spirit of faith, and the last one being commanded results, my prayer is that God, even from henceforth, your people will begin to operate under commanded results like never before. May the things that may have seemed to be delaying, the things that may have seemed to have taken long, the prayers that they have been believing you for. Father, may they begin to see you answer as they operate under the spirit of faith in the name of Jesus. So I command results to follow you. I command unusual miracles to follow you. I command signs to follow you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. None of the things that God has put in your heart to believe him for and the things that you will speak out will fail to come to pass. May the Lord cause you to enter into a season of fruit full answers a fruitful results in jesus precious and holy name amen and amen and amen praise god wow we thank god for that moment i trust that you have been blessed tremendously and my prayer is that the lord will continually strengthen the spirit of faith on the inside of you we are closing this month and we are going to be starting a new month starting uh, uh starting tomorrow i want you to join me tomorrow as we are going to be looking at how we can command our new seasons uh, even through the spirit of faith so i want you to be a part of me tomorrow again 10 minutes uh, past 12 we are going to be again dealing uh, with the same topic, the spirit of faith, but utilizing it around commanding our new season. God bless you. My name is Raven Pancras. It was glad having you join me, and I trust that you have been blessed. Please remember, if in case you missed the, uh, the past teachings, you can just go ahead and check it out in my YouTube channel, and that's known as Rev Pancras Ngira. Just go to my YouTube channel, subscribe, and you will get far much more teachings. God keep you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.